Hey guys, John here. This is my new plugin called Kick It. This makes kick drums and it can make 808s for you in a very easy way to use. So with these type of sounds, it's really broken up into four main components. So first is going to be the low end fundamental of the sound, then the noise, some saturation, and then some EQ. And that's really what you need. That's the recipe for making a good kick drum or also a good 808. So with that being said, let's kind of look at this plugin and see how it works. On the left hand side, you're going to have a pitch slider, which changes the fundamental pitch of the actual drum. Then you're going to have these tone controls for the for the fundamental that kind of change the characteristics and kind of customize them to what you want it to do. Next up, you have two independent noise oscillators. Generally, you won't have to use the second one, but I added it just in case you wanted to use it. And that's why it comes default with the volume all the way at the bottom. And then you have an EQ at the very bottom with very specific EQ points that I've picked out that I think help make that sound. So without further ado, let's kind of go through each module and see how this works. So out of the box, it's going to sound like this. So it's a basic kick drum type of sound. It's nothing spectacular or it's nothing horrible. It's just a good starting point to start sculpting this sound. So by default, this is going to start at a 50 hertz fundamental. And then here on the graph, we can kind of see it sliding down. Now we can also hear the noise as well. So let's just work on the fundamental first and then we're gonna move on to the noise. So we can mute this first noise here and just listen to the fundamental. So starting off, we're gonna change our tone decay here. So it takes a little bit longer for that sound to actually decay. Now we have the tone release if we want it to kind of linger around a little bit longer. And these two knobs are kind of are going to be what you want to go to if you are going for an 808 type of sound or a low end type of hit because it's going to last a little bit longer moving on we have the tone pitch slide as you can see the the sound once it hits it slides there's a pitch slide to it so if we increase this it's going to go much higher as a pitch slide and the time this takes is going to be controlled with this pitch, this tone pitch slide time. So hopefully those four knobs kind of make sense. They're very intuitive, easy to use, and hopefully they're very straightforward. And at the defaults here, you have a general kick type of contour to it. If we want to change the pitch, we can drag this up or something. If you want a more a high pitch type of sound. And that's going to rest maybe around here. And if we want to bring it down, we can do that as well. So this is at 50 hertz at the center, and then there's minus 20 hertz and then plus 30 hertz on the top end. So that's going to be your general range for that kick drum because you really don't need more or less. It's kind of confined to the spots where you generally want them to be in. So next up, let's, let's introduce our first noise. So let's unmute this here. So we have this type of noise. So let's mute our fundamental right here. So this noise oscillator is going to be that attack sound. Now we have the pitch. If you want more of a clicky sound to it. So that's with the tone here. But maybe you don't want that. So the default I picked sounds pretty decent for what you would expect. And then here's the width knob. kind of narrows it out a little bit. So if I increase this volume quite substantially here, we can kind of see it acting up right here on the EQ. Now, if we change the width, we can see that opens up to much more frequencies. So that's basically how that works in a nutshell. Then we also have the decay and the release kind of similar to what we have with the tone decay and the tone release. So let's listen to that. And then here's the release. I added a healthy amount to the DK and the release for whatever reason. If that's what you're wanting to make, you can do that. But generally the defaults are pretty well dialed in because you don't really want it to be too, too drag, dragged out with the decay and the release. And then I also wanted to add the mute and the slider option because there's a lot of times where you want to mute the, the fundamental and like, okay, let's bring it in. Okay, maybe it's a little bit too low. You want to drag it up just a little bit and kind of just A, B the tune until you get the right balance of those. 
So let's say you do want to use the second oscillator here for the noise. So we have this first one here. Let's mute that and let's bring up the second one here. Now that's going to work just on these knobs this here on the bottom, which are the same ones at the top. Let's make this one quite high pitched here, something like that. And let's increase the width a little bit. So this is our first noise. And here's our second. So with all of it together, we can kind of add it in like that. Next up, we want to add some saturation to it. That's always a very good thing to add to kick drums or 808s to kind of bring them to life a little bit here. And keep in mind, once you increase this amount knob, the volume will increase, which is also why there's the output slider here. So let's turn this down first and let's start increasing some, uh, some saturation or distortion. So something right there sounds pretty healthy. Now maybe we feel that it brought up a little bit of the noise, so let's bring those down a little bit. And then the color knob also kind of just affects the tonality of this saturation. So all the way to the left, it would sound like this. Then to the right. So a little more high end on the right and a little more low end on the left. And the middle is gonna be at the center, obviously. Then you have your post filter here. If you kind of want to take off that from the top. And then your post gain as well here. It's all the way at the top at the beginning, but this is kind of a secondary volume control to bring down that gain after you add that here. That's basically how that works. So now let's dive into the EQ here. So this is a pretty decent sounding drum here. So let's go in the EQ. So we have a low pass, which I'm sure y'all obviously know what it does. Once we increase this here, it's going to cut off a lot of that low end. There's also the high end. If there's a little bit too much of those uh, noise oscillators, it's kind of irritating you for whatever reason. And we can see it affecting here. And next up, these EQ points are kind of interesting to talk about. So this 50 hertz is a very good sound for a main kick drum, and this is going to be where you, if you want to boost a little bit more low end, a little more thumpiness to it, this is where you want to do that here. But just be careful, the more you increase this, the more you might start starting to clip, so obviously bring down the output. So maybe like something like that, let's bring this up a little bit. And I also added these 60 hertz in case you wanted to do it a little bit higher pitched and you also wanted that same control. So these 50 and 60 are kind of going to be a little independent. So if you have your pitch a little bit higher, then maybe you want to gravitate more towards the 60. Kind of depends on what you're working with. Next up, this 160 is very important because if, if there's a lot of mud in the kick drum and it sounds just kind of like a blanket over it, this is where you want to pull this down. So this knob here, generally, I would suggest to cut this. Maybe something like that. A little bit goes a long way for that. And if you want some of that chest, that that clarity, a little bit of the uh, punchiness to this kick, that's where this 1.5 comes in. And then at the very top, you want to add a little bit more of that noise, kind of just overall bring them both up just in that spectrum. Then 10K is where you want to be. And that's pretty much how that functions. It's very straightforward. It's very easy to use. And each knob and each slider is very thought out. And I guess it's well put together, hopefully. So if you want to get this plugin, it's free for download. It's in the video description below. So hopefully it makes your life a little bit easier. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Have a good day.